Um, let's practice factoring in question three. So 3a doesn't really look like any of the patterns that we've learned, so we're going to look for something called the GCF, the greatest common factor, just something that goes into all the terms. So I notice all of them are divisible by 3, 6, 18, and 3 are all divisible by 3. And then for a's, we have a cubed, a squared, and a squared. So the smallest power they all have in common is a squared, and then they all have a b in common as well from b in the first term. So basically in our head, we're going to divide each piece by 3, a squared b, and that's how we factor. So 3 a squared b comes on the outside, and then in my head or on paper, I divide each term by 3 a squared b. So the first term, I'm left with a 2, and I'm left with an a, and the b's cancel out. The second term, um, you, some of us will do this step in our head, some of us will write it out. 18 divided by 3 gives me minus 6 for the negative sign. The a's cancel out, and it looks like b squared will be left over. And then the third term, let's see. The 3's cancel out, so there's no number left over. The a's cancel out, so I'm just left with a single b, so plus b. And that would be the factored form. This leftover piece doesn't really fit any patterns. Um, now, for the next one is where we look for like the sum and the product. So anytime we have a, uh, x squared minus bx, or plus bx plus c, we want a product of c and a sum of b. So in this example, we need a product of negative 40 and a sum of 3. So I'm going to try to think of two numbers that make 40 when we multiply but add up to negative 3. So I'm trying to think 10 and 4 don't work, 2 and 20 don't work, maybe 8 and 5, and one of them's negative. So negative 8 plus 5 gives me negative 3. So those will be my factors, x minus 8, x plus 5. So this is a nice shortcut when there's no number in front of the x squared. In the next one, it gets a little more complicated. So the next one, we're going to factor out a GCF. I notice they're all even, so that's a 2, and I notice they all have an x. So then 6x cubed divided by 2x, it looks like we're left with 3x squared. Um, divide by 2x, it looks like we're left with 8x, and then minus 3. So when we have an, a coefficient on the x squared, it gets a little messier. We need a product of a times c and a sum of b. So in this one, we need a product of negative 9 from negative 3 times 3 and a sum of 8 from the middle. So take a second to think about that. I'm going to go ahead and share that. So if you want to pause and think, go for it. Um, it ends up being 9 and negative 1. So 9 times negative 1 and then 9 plus negative 1 gives me 8. But this unfortunately doesn't give me my factors. So I'm going to show you a little shortcut with boxes. So I'm going to put the first term in a box and the last term in a box. And then I'm going to put 9x and minus 1x. And that's because 8x could be written as 9 minus 1. So I haven't really changed anything. I just wrote it a little different. So 9 minus 1 is 8. So it's still the same polynomial. I've just expanded the terms a little bit. And this is going to help us factor. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor kind of in every direction. So we're going to factor these two. What do they have in common? 3x squared and 9x. So they have a 3 in common and they have x in common. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 3x out here. And then we're going to do something similar for the bottom row. What do the bottom two have in common? They really don't have anything in common other than the negative 1, so we're going to take out a negative 1. And then we're going to do the same thing vertically. What do these two have in common? So the numbers have nothing in common, but they both have an x. So I'm going to take out an x. We're kind of doing the GCF piece by piece. And then what do these two have in common? If th things have nothing in common, you'll just say plus 1. Um, it looks like these two have a 3 in common. So we'll take out a 3 or a positive 3. And then as weird as that is, those are my two factors. So we get 2x. We get 3x minus 1 and we get x plus 3. 
And then you can multiply it out to check your work. So 3x times x is 3x squared. Minus 1 times x is x, negative x. 3x times 3 is 9x. And then negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. And then these add up to 8. So a cool little trick for factoring. We'll practice that more. And then D is another um, formula. I think this one also has a GCF um, because 36 and four are both divisible by four. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a four out. 36 divided by four is nine X squared and four divided by four is one. And then this does, this is not the same. Notice we don't have the BX or the BX. So it's a different type of factoring. This is a special case called difference of squares, which will always be A plus B, A minus B. And so as we practice, we'll start to recognize these patterns more. So in this case, my A is 3X for 3X squared gives me 9X squared. And then my B is one for one squared. So we'll just get four. We'll get 3X for A plus one for B. And then we'll get 3x for a minus 1 for b. And that's it. Um, let's solve some equations. Um, pause if you need more practice with factoring. Otherwise, I'm going to jump into equations. So we have parentheses. Let's get rid of those. Um, what's great about videos is you can pause and go at your own pace. So we're gonna distribute the negative three, we get negative six x plus three plus three x equals seven minus x. And then what we wanna do is look for like terms on the same side. So the six, negative six x and the three x could go together to give me negative three x plus three equals seven minus x. And then what we wanna do is get x on one side, numbers on the other side. So I'm gonna add x to get rid of x's on the right. Whatever I do to one side, I do to both sides. So negative two x plus three is seven. And now that I've moved x to the left, that means the three needs to move to the other side. As long as you do it to both sides, it's allowed. So we'll minus three. We get negative two x is four, and then division will always be the last step. Divide by negative two, and x is, happens to be negative two as well. And if I wanted to check my work, I plug negative two in. So I'll let you check your work, but you would just plug in negative two and you would make sure you get the same number on both sides. So I put a question mark to check. Um, B is a quadratic, which means we have to factor. So we can't like add X, there's two X's, one has a power, one doesn't. So factoring is actually our trick. So if we have x squared minus x, that's the same as minus 1x equals 0. So we need a product of negative 2 from the last term and a sum of negative 1. What are two numbers that make multiply to negative 2, add to negative 1? Think about it. I'm going to share. And those will be my two factors because there's no number here to worry about. If we had a number out here, we'll do that longer method. So I think if I do negative two times one, I get negative two. If I do negative two plus one, I get negative one. So my factors will be negative two and one. And then we'll solve each of those. So we'll say x minus two equals zero and x plus one equals zero. And that's because as long as one of these is zero, they multiply to zero. And that's because three times zero is zero, five times zero is zero. So as long as one of them is zero, the solution is zero. So we're gonna get x is two and we're gonna get x is negative one. So there's two possible solutions. And again, you can plug them in to check your work. Um, let's do number five, take a break if you need to, and then we'll do the rest in one last video. Uh, number five is just plugging into a formula. Um, this is a formula that measures surface area on a cylinder. So this would be like the area of the outside. This isn't volume or like traditional area. It's like if we unfolded the cylinder, how big would that piece of paper be? Um, so we know the radius is six. So we're gonna plug in six everywhere we see R. And we know the height is nine. So we're gonna plug in nine for H. Um, so we're gonna say two pi is just a number times three and then six plus nine. And this will be an inches squared because it's area. 
And we'll follow all the same rules we've been doing. So we'll do order of operations, six plus nine is 15. And then we can just multiply. We're not gonna um, use a number for pi. It's more exact to just say pi. So I'm gonna multiply everything but the pi. And I wrote three here when I should have wrote six. Um, so six and six for the R. and nine for each. So we're gonna do two times six times 15, and then the pi will just hang out. So if you have a calculator, do that in your head. In my head, I'm doing two times 15 is 30, and then times six is 180 pi, and then inches squared. So this is considered an exact form. Uh, if you used pi on your calculator, you'd figure out the number, but for now, we're just gonna write 180 pi. And we'll meet back for one last video on the review, and Pause as you need to, come back as you need to.